Well, good morning, Magandang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. As you can see, everything is wet. Everything's wet and green back here. We had rain all night long. I think we're going to have rain for several days to come. Now, today is Friday. Today is Friday, June 12th. And there is some significance in that day, especially here in the Philippines, because it is a national holiday. Uh, today is Independence Day, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the history of the Philippines when we get into today's episode. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Someone has a wet face. I think it's been playing in some of my plants back here. Well, anyway, every morning I come back to the backyard back here and I just do a walkabout. No, this is in Australia and I don't do a walkabout like they do down, uh, down under, but I do walk around the backyard and it amazes me every single day something new. And I always talk about that. This was here today, but it wasn't there yesterday. And it's just incredible. It's incredible. And uh, that's part of nature. That's part of the, the wonder of nature. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning, about what I've learned, what I've learned being here in the Philippines growing, because it's a different growing environment here than it is in my uh, native country of the United States. Uh, but, and there's some very interesting deltas or differences between the way we grow things in the U.S. and the way things grow here. And again, we'll discuss that in just a little bit. Now today's episode is going to be mainly about the, uh, the, the things I've learned over the years, the last three years living here inside the Philippines when it comes to growing. Uh, I've grown things inside the U.S growing stuff over here. I want to talk about my experiences of what the difference is of that. I think you'll find it interesting. But I also think it's more than appropriate to talk today a little bit about this day in history back in 1898. It's very important. Uh, as I said earlier inside the intro, uh, today is a national holiday. Today is Independence Day. And I, I also want to mention that I think there's some irony in the term Independence Day. And I'll explain that in just a moment. There's some, some grand irony, I will call it. Well, anyway, Independence Day. What is Independence Day? Well, if you, if you probably are aware, maybe you're not. Maybe you're not a history buff. But it's very interesting. Back in the uh, 1800s and 1700s, way back when, uh, the Philippines was actually occupied. Occupied by the Spanish. You remember way back when in the Christopher Columbus days and all these world travelers uh, from Italy and Spain and the, the UK, mainly from Europe, they were going around and they were expanding uh, their king and their queen's authority, taking and occupying lands all around the world. Well, the Philippines happened to be one of those, and it was occupied for a very long time by the Spanish, as I said. Well, there was also something that was going on with a country that was developing a little bit later, which is the United States. And the United States was in a war with Spain at the time, the Spanish-American War. Well, the Americans won that war. And part of the spoils of war is a lot of times the, 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 the defeated country has to give up lands. Well, the U.S. is usually pretty fair about the way they do things, and they don't usually just grab things. They kind of pay. They'll go inside there, and they will pay uh, the, the country that they defeated. And this is something that they did. Uh, when, when they won the war, they had a treaty. There was a treaty that was done in Paris. Coincidentally, the name of the treaty was the Treaty of Paris. And as part of the agreement, uh, between Spain and the United States. Uh, the United States paid Spain for several of the territories that it had occupied for such a long time, the Philippines being one of them. 
uh, they paid uh, Spain 20, U, 20 million US dollars uh, to, be, to take control, to take control of some of the territories. And that one, for $20 million, they took control of the Philippines. They also took control over Puerto Rico, Guam, and Cuba at that time. That was part of the Treaty of Paris. Now, the irony, let's talk about the irony. The, even though, uh, and there's actually two big terms, terminologies of irony here, the Philippines actually took uh, or the United States actually took control of the Philippines for quite a long period of time, for about, oh, I'm going to say about 48 years. Uh, so they really didn't have their independence. They just transferred <laughs> occupation. It was kind of like, it was kind of like an occupation. Uh, the U.S. was here for 48 years until, uh, until 1946. And in 1946, the Filipino people said, we've had enough. Uh, we thought we were independent. And, uh, and it was a, just, there was just too many things going on with control. And the Filipinos kicked the U.S. out. And the second irony that I'm talking about is their second independence, which actually they've had several independence because there's been more than the United States and the, Sp and the Spanish who have occupied the Philippines. The Japanese even did that. But let's get back to the history lesson on the Independence Day that we're specifically talking about. But in, in uh, 1946, uh, they kicked the U.S. out. Ironically, it was on our Independence Day in the U.S., which is July 4th. Crazy, isn't it? Well, anyway, that's a quick lesson of uh, the the, uh, the why uh, this is a national holiday here, Independence Day. So. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get to the topic at hand. I want to do a walk around a walk around the yard back here just a little bit. And I want to make some comparisons. Uh, the difference between growing seasons here in the Philippines and growing seasons back in the U.S. Now, I often talk about how beautiful the weather here is in the Philippines. 365 days of this, uh, mostly sunny days. But this is going into rainy season, so we're starting to get the clouds. We're starting to get a little bit of the seasonal rain, and I expect it to be more so in the, in the weeks to come. But even though they have their seasons here, you know, they have a winter season and they have a summer season, and I'm not sure that they have much in between, but it's really not that big of a difference because uh, it is like this all year round. That's one of the beauties of the Philippines. In the U.S., where I come from, we have four distinct seasons, four distinct seasons, and you can really see a change. You can see a change, especially when you go uh, in between the summertime and the wintertime, because uh, no matter where you are in the U.S., uh, probably mm, maybe 30, 40, 45 of the states, of the 50 states that we have there, you are going to see a very good distinction when winter comes around. That's when all your leaves start falling off of most of your trees. That's when your grass goes dormant, turns brown. You don't have beautiful green grass like we have here. Uh, and it waits for spring to awaken all of the, all the, the, the plants and the grass, all the nature comes alive again in the springtime. And it starts all over again. Here, it's the same all year round. So I want to kind of make a comparison. And a good place to start at is to go over and take a look at our jackfruit tree. Uh, let's go talk and see our jackfruit tree. Now this is the first place we're gonna start right now. Uh, this is our jackfruit tree and it's doing great. I've been doing the pruning properly and it's just got a great shape. The leaves are so healthy looking over here and I expect maybe maybe one to two years we'll start getting jackfruit on here. But I want you to look. This is, this is going into rainy season. It's kind of the end of the summer period, but it's still very hot here. We're probably, most of the time right now we are in Fahrenheit. We're probably between 80 and 95 degrees, uh, probably anywhere between 20 and 30, 31 degrees Celsius here. But I want you to look down here. You see all this. This, th These are <laughs> the leaves that are falling off of the jackfruit tree. And they've been doing this for the last couple of months now. But you know, in the US, when th these start falling, it kind of coincides with fall. Uh, then uh, the words kind of go together there. Uh, all the trees that are green like this that have these type of leaves, uh, everything starts falling. And then the tree becomes bare. The limbs are bare 
and it doesn't start putting new leaves, new growth on there until spring. It starts popping in again, and then over the summer, it looks like this. Trees look like this. But here, even when the leaves fall, they are developing new leaves. They never, you see right here? All these, this, there was a yellow leaf, like you see down here, here, and it sheds. What it does, it sheds the old, and, and it starts anew year round. It never becomes bare like our trees in the US. And one of the reasons why it sheds the leaves like this right here, main, one of the main reasons is to prevent disease. After a while, you have insects and you have uh, different types of uh, blights that you will get on your trees. Maybe fungus, uh, maybe little viruses and things like that. And as a part of nature, the miracle I talk about of nature, it sheds those leaves so you have new growth all year round and the tree stays healthy. But uh, I have to clean this up with the right, but that's it over here. Again, in the US, these type of trees over the fall and the winter, boom, they would all be, it would be bare. And the grass, let's take a look at the grass. You see this grass? This grass is like this 365 days of the year here in the Philippines. We're in our home in Charleston, South Carolina, in our home probably around November, the beginning of November, all this would start turning brown. It would start turning this color right here. And it actually looks dead. The grass looks dead, but it is going into a dormancy state. And it stays like that until about, until about March, mid-March, towards the end of March, everything starts getting gr uh, green again for the next season. It's, and then, but it's also cold outside and, but it's just not attractive. Here, it's like this all year round. All right, well, let's talk about gardening. Can you imagine living someplace where you can garden 365 days of the year without having a greenhouse and having some type of a controlled environment that you can grow things during the winter time? You can grow in the Philippines 365 days a year. You always have something. If you have a farm, you always are harvesting something here all year round. In the U.S., not so much. You have your growing seasons for particular vegetables, uh, even fruits. Fruits, you have certain times of the year that you get fruits, and then certain times they kind of go dormant as well. Now, there's no way I can close out my segment on talking about differences without talking a little bit about our banana plants here. Now, we have banana plants in the U.S. We have banana plants in our yard. We have, oh, I'm going to say about 30 banana plants spread around. That's a coconut. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about coconut right now, or maybe we will. Well, in the U.S., we have banana plants. And believe it or not, even in our zone, our hardiness zone in Charleston, we get bananas. But only, only after about two years. Uh, and why two years, you say, when here we get bananas about every eight months we get bananas. Uh, well, in the U.S., what will happen is we get frosts. We'll go below freezing. And if it stays, if it's a hard frost, say like it's 25 degrees Fahrenheit, or maybe a minus, minus five centigrade uh, on, the, on the thermometer, uh, what will happen is these plants, all these, uh, all of our banana plates will drop. They will drop all the way down to about here. They will look dead. Everything will look dead. And then in the spring, in the spring, uh, they will start growing back again. Now in the US, if we are allowed to go over 12 months, if we go through a winter season, it's very, very mild, and we barely break freezing, the next season, which is basically the second year, we get bananas. Uh, so that's the differences between in the US when it comes to bananas and here in the Philippines. Every, about every eight months, we get these right here. Now depending where you live in the US, you can grow or cannot grow these. These Hawaiian palms were sometimes known as foxtail because the, the leaves, the leaves from the palms look like foxtails a little bit. Well, anyway, I tried growing these in my home in Charleston and because sometimes the, the winter season is so cold there, uh, it, it, they die. I planted, I think, at least three of these in our yard and they weren't, they weren't cheap, they were very expensive. I got them from Lowe's, Lowe's, the uh, lawn and garden and home building supply store, and they, they never made it. Now, if you live in a milder climate, may, maybe in Florida, maybe in Southern California, uh, maybe uh, 
maybe along the Gulf Coast, I think you're okay with it. it we were right at the, the zone where it's, it can go either way, but here, uh, here they grow no problem. You see these, these are very popular landscaping option. They grow really tall. You see that coconut tree there? Uh, these palms will grow about as tall as these coconuts here, but they just won't have any coconuts dropping on your head like these do. Well, <laughs> no, no, no topic of conversation would be complete. No, not talking about dogs, about uh, talking about some bedding plants when we're talking uh, about differences. We, we talked about some trees and, and things inside the raised bed garden, but we also need to talk a little bit about some bedding plants. Uh, and for our example for today, uh, we have a bunch of bedding plants here. You've seen these before in our videos. We have lilies, we have some lilies over here. And they produce these really nice little bell, these little bell type flowers here all year round they never stop we have the the uh, the the Moses and the cradle inside here which are bedding plants but here these grow these grow all year round 365 days of the year now in comparison back in the US specifically in our area in Charleston South Carolina where we're from we have a limited growing season so we have to go every year we have to go to our local home and garden store and get fresh bedding plants because we don't have a greenhouse to do this over the winter time so what we do is we go to someplace like Home Depot or Lowe's and then we pick out plants and what we do in Charleston we wait we have a safety date our safety date is March the end of March March 31st okay now before we close today we have a very special birthday shout out uh, from a very special lady to a <laughs> her very special daughter. Anyway, uh, it is coming from, it is originating from her mom, and her mom's name is Maria Teresa Strigan Aquino, also known as Winky on our yeah. channel. <laughs> Winky has been a really big supporter of the channel, but this is not about Winky. This is about her daughter, and her daughter's name is? Nigella. Ivanka. Uh, Nigella. Nigella is turning 12 today. 12 years old today. And uh, I, I got to tell you, Nigella, your mom is a very special person. So <laughs> I know you're going to end up being a very special person in life as you grow up as well. So anyway, from your mom and from the both of us, we want to wish you a happy 12th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> now we have one more shout out. And we don't normally do anything but anniversaries. We do birthdays and sometimes we do OFW <laughs> recognition for all the special people that are overseas making a sacrifice to support their families back here in the Philippines. But sometimes, sometimes we, re <laughs> we receive something that is so touching and so inspiring that we want to share that with you. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to read this verbatimly uh, from my little message here. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and try to get this right. So anyway, this is from Mary uh, Genevieve. Gen Genevieve. Genevieve Pamute, uh, and this is what she writes to us here on my PI James. Hi, James and Ness. My husband and I are avid fans of you and your show. My husband, Chris Atkins, particularly has been watching your show for more than two years now. He's actually the one that got me hooked with your show. We too dream of building our own house in Batangas. Proud, I butchered that. Batangueño. Batangueño. <laughs> okay, I think I got it right that time. Anyway, anyway, uh, she's she's planning on building her own house in the near future, and mm. watching you uh, build your house just inspire us so much. However, however, my husband is in the hospital now because of kidney surgery, and hoping you can greet him as he still watches your show during the hospital stay, as he said your videos entertain him. Uh, hope you can inspire him to get better and not lose hope. That would really be a nice surprise for him. Again, thank you for always inspiring us, and hopefully we can visit you guys uh, we go, when we go back to Batangas during Christmas. Thank you. And that is from Milky, and she is over in Dubai. Well, anyway, for Chris, Chris, we hope you are getting better, or since this is a few days old that we received the message, we hope that you're already on your recovery and you are back home. Recover soon. Yeah, please, please let us know. Anyway, to you and your inspiring life, we want to wish you a speedy recovery. Yay! 
Well, anyway, I think it's time to close from back here on the porch at Villa Feliz. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but that's what it's all about. Learning new things, experiencing new things, sharing new things. Uh, so, ready to close? Hop on. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll do that. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, please give us a thumbs up, please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You will be subscribed and you'll be notified next time we upload a new video. So until such time, from here in the Philippines, you have a wonderful and blessed Independence Day. today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well